Welcome to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney, and tonight on the program, we have another in our popular series of point A to Bs. Uh, what's a point A to B? It's a road trip taken totally at random. We pick point A from a bucket filled with the names of Bay Area cities on little slips of paper, and then go to point B, also picked totally at random. So, where is point A for tonight? Go ahead, pick point A. And point A, our starting point for tonight's show is going to be, oh my God, Davenport. Davenport's great, but Davenport is like really in the Southwest Bay. And we gotta be practical about this because we have to be able to get from point A to point B in one show. So for point B, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put South Bay and even farther south locations in point B, and let's see where we come up with that. So give me a minute. Go ahead, pick point B. Pacific Grove, that'll be a great trip. But we have to start at Davenport. How do you get down to Davenport? Well, first, head south along the coast. Get on Highway 1. Past Half Moon Bay, past San Gregorio, past Pescadero. You'll be 90 minutes south of San Francisco when a quaint little town pops up on the busy highway. You've arrived at Point A. It's a charming little place, but I do not want to be taking this trip by myself. Previously, of course, my good friend Liam has been along, but this time we did something different. We got on Craigslist and posted a notice that said, you want to be in the passenger seat for the next point A to point B. We poured through the millions of responses, well, one or two, and we finally looked at the candidates. Howdy. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hey. I'm Amy Lesnick, Executive Director of the Full Circle Fund. And we'll talk more about what the Full Circle Fund is later. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's, Let's go. go. With Amy in the passenger seat, we head south. You are on Highway 1, yes, Coast Highway. How far from San Francisco? About 75 miles. We're in Davenport with native Alberta Orlando. Oh. Yeah, is that great? That's cool. <laughs> you grew up here. Yes. Did, did you grow up here? No, I, I didn't. Neither had I, but Amy had done her homework about Davenport. Well, I don't know a lot about it, but I did hear that, isn't it true that it used to actually be a mile further north than where it is here? Well, it started back in 1868, uh -huh. and that was when a whaler uh, came in from Monterey. His name was John Davenport and he started a uh, wharf, and so it was called Davenport's Landing. And pretty soon it was just Davenport's, and then it was Davenport. The whaling connection stuck, so there's the Whale City Bakery. Well, let's go get a sticky bun. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> this is what the bakery's famous for. Can I have a non-fat vanilla latte and one of your famous sticky bun muffins? And I would like the same. Yum, yum. But what has kept Davenport going economically for more than a century is something that starts out sounding dull, but ends up being fascinating. Let's talk about something concrete. It was built in 1906. Why did they decide to put a cement plant here? Because this whole mountain is filled with lime. Its cement was going to help build the Panama Canal. That, at least, was the plan. But that idea was shattered in 45 seconds. The 1906 quake shook San Francisco to the ground, and part of what rose afterward came from this cement plant, Oakland City Hall, the Hearst Building, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Bay Bridge, the very ground we walk on. This is all Santa Cruz, Portland <laughs> cement. Everything except the roof is cement. Alberta's talking about Davenport's almost never used jail. 
The amazing fact is, the jail only had two inmates ever. Then later on, they started using it just to uh, take the town drunks and put them in there so they wouldn't go home and beat up their wives or... <laughs> But outside of the food... I think we're great. Thank you so much. The jail. And its smashing setting on the coast. What do you guys do for fun in this town? We go to Santa Cruz. <laughs> As we head south from Davenport, we're going to skip Santa Cruz and head into an absolutely unique stretch of the California coastline. Yeah, Moss Landing is the cosmic center of the universe. Get ready to cover your eyes. A little hanky-panky going on there. When I on the Bay's point A to B continues. Welcome back to I on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney. And I'm Amy Lesnick. Amy won the lotto to be the guest host on our point A to B trip. Point A being... Davenport. <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, is it? Point B, Pacific Grove. Our next stop. Friday afternoon here in the pigsty. It is the Pig Radio. Carson here with you, serving it up. It is the pig, and we are going to have some fun today. Right now, though, brand new Sonny Landreth here on the Pig Radio station. You know you got trouble when you call it. It's locally owned, locally operated, K Pig Radio. I remember listening to it when I was growing up in Hollister. Shame on you. It's everything that robot radio is not. You were saying you pick your own songs, right? Yeah, we pick our own songs. Out of a database of uh, 30,000 songs. In fact, Rolling Stone wrote us up about five or six years ago as one of the ten stations left in America that don't suck. A little bit of the local band Mudfrog. Do people actually come up to the window to make requests? Yeah, they absolutely do. You know, the drive up window is famous here at Pig Radio Station. And in fact, requests come in from around the world. Hey, we're just real people, you know? I mean, we're playing real music for real people. You know, if there was nobody out there listening, I would have so much fun just doing it. Well, more power to you. God, I just love to see small broadcasters make it. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Can I do a request before we go? Sure. All right, we are back. It is the Pig Radio Station. Carson here with you, hanging out on a gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. We're going to start this thing off with a special request. This one's for Amy, a little Ray Charles for you. On the pig. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Now we're heading down the coast from Watsonville to this place on the coast. And one of the most unforgettable encounters we have ever had on this program. It all happened at Moss Landing. It's a very small town and a very quiet, calm experience. I always say it's like a vortex. The water, the ocean, the way it is in Moss Landing, it just kind of like draws people in here. Think about it. You've got Sandy Beach coastline north and south. You've got rocky intertidal at Monterey and Carmel. You've got one of the largest estuaries uh, on the central coast in the form of Elkhorn Slough. You have the largest submarine canyon that bisects the continental margin just within swimming distance. I think we have everything. Wouldn't you say? Including a nice place to stay once you get here. This is the Captain's Inn at Moss Landing. We have 10 bedrooms all together. Six of them have the beautiful waterfront view. You can sit in your soaking tub, sip your wine, watch the sun go down and see a sea otter swim by. Wow, I also understand that there's like a, a tour in town to see the sea otters. Of course, you, uh, Elkhorn Slough Safari Nature Boat Trips is one of the most popular things that our guests do. Off we go, you ready? We didn't know it at the time, but this trip aboard the Elkhorn Slough Safari would prove to be unforgettable. Well, what we do is we do a natural history tour. It's about a two-hour trip up Elkhorn Slough. You know, they're all fully guided trips, so we, uh, we get up right in the middle of all the wildlife. These are all sea lions. They look like they have their flippers up. What they're doing is thermal regulation. Captain Jan Gideon, he's the pilot through the Elkhorn Slough. What's special about this part of the coast? Usually the main draw up here is probably the sea otters, because that's kind of the fun thing. Well, do you think that we have much of a chance of seeing any? Well, they're on the threatened species list, but this area is now known probably one of the best places in the world to go see sea otters. Well, I know that's going to make her very happy, because this is Amy's whole point for coming along. Well, we're going to treat you today. Good. I hope so. Otherwise, 
hell to pay. There was no shortage of birds, no shortage of boats, and incredibly, there's one sea otter, yeah. No shortage of otters. Then we spotted another, and another, and then. <laughs> Jackpot today, look at that. I've never seen so many in one spot before. Those are all sea otters? They are. There were so many that it was easy to see why a group of sea otters is called a raft of sea otters. It wasn't that long ago when there were only about 20 California sea otters left. Now, there are about 2,800. There he is! And based on this rare high-definition video evidence... Oh, look, they're kissing! That population is about to increase. Pretty rough mating sequence there. The male actually grabs a hold of the female's nose with his teeth. Ow! It's kind of a slippery environment there. Scientists can actually tell the difference between males and females by looking at the scar marks on their nose. But despite it all, they emerge as an apparently happy couple. How cute they are. What'd you think? Oh, that was so incredible. You know, I've, I've traveled all over the world, 70 different countries, and that's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Next, the loss of a landmark. I can't believe that uh, the buildings have uh, deteriorated to the point that they have. And just who is our co-host? All about Amy, next. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney along with our guest host. Amy Lesnick. And we're engaged on an epic trip from point A. To point B. Point A being Davenport. And point B being Pacific Grove. And our next stop is lunch in Moss Landing. Are you hungry? Yes, that sounds like a great idea. Um, well, do you remember that back at K-Pig Radio, we asked them for a recommendation? Phil's Fish Market. Is yeah. that what we should do? Okay. It's the only oh. spot in Moss Landing. And here we are. I grew up in Monterey, and I wanted to keep the same feeling that I had growing up on the wharf as we have here. So you can walk in, open case, fish market, the piles of food on the, you know, for a serving, and you can move the tables as you want to move them, and I think it's a lot of fun with that. I'm just gonna go with the broiled halibut sandwich. Owner Phil has three keys to his success. We're blessed, and we're lucky, and we're good. You could say the same thing about the whole enchilada. A special guest drove all the way from Hollister to meet us there. Amy, this is my dad. Hi! How are you? It's like they know each other or something. Huh? Yeah. Amy is my special co-host of the day for the oh, show. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, okay. And this is my stepmother, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Hi. I'll give you a hug, too. <laughs> Ruth, nice to meet you. <laughs> we fed the folks. Can you tell us an embarrassing story about Brian? Or I wasn't. I was a good, a good, I was a good kid. I didn't do anything give embarrassing, did I? Uh, no, I... Uh, embarrassing? No. Uh, the answer is no, Dad. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's time to head south. Woohoo! To this world-famous town. Well, you know why we're here. Because Castroville is the artichoke capital of the world. And Brian's dad has a really interesting fact for us about that. Inside there's a poster that has Marilyn Monroe on it. Most people don't realize that she was the artichoke queen in Castroville in 1948. Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn Monroe. Did you meet her? No. This is what these fields produce, um, and I love these fried artichokes. Oh, yeah, this is definitely one? my favorite. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Are they good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> this turns slightly serious as we head south and visit a part of Monterey's past yeah, that thousands of you <laughs> already know about. <laughs> You're getting the hang of this way too well. <laughs> you think it's a pretty easy thing to do? Oh, really easy. Can I just start over again? By now, yeah. no doubt, you're curious. Sorry. Did it work? <laughs> just who is this person who's never hosted a TV show before? I have been here and we you've, already... You've... Oh, sorry. Just... <laughs> I stepped on your line. What? Let's find out. And at 5'2", Amy Lesnick. <laughs> 
I am from Texas. Oh, from Dallas, Fort Worth area. I was involved in everything, doing everything, organizing the neighborhood, kick the can game, you know, different activities every day. Uh, I went to Emory for undergrad, and then I went to Wharton for business school. And when did you move to San Francisco? I came here about 10 years ago. Now, Amy's CEO of a nonprofit called the Full Circle Fund. We were started about seven years ago by a couple entrepreneurs and venture capitalists, and they realized, wow, there's all this incredible talent here in the Bay Area, and if we could just harness just a fraction of it and apply it towards social issues, well then, sky's the limit in terms of what we could do to really bring change to our community. Now we're heading south on one for a look at something that will soon be gone forever. Just ask my dad. I can't believe that uh, the buildings have uh, deteriorated to the point that they have. When's the last time you actually came here? Probably uh, 30 years or more. I expect it'll be gone probably next year or after. This is Fort Ord just north of Monterey. Or rather, it was. 1,100 of its soldiers fought and died in four Pacific theater campaigns in World War II. It was a major training center for infantry bound for Vietnam, but it didn't matter. None of these buildings were deemed historic. But they certainly did make history on this part of the coast. Those troops were housed in the largest single construction project in the history of Monterey County springing up almost overnight in 1940 with such ironic military precision that it was very easy to get lost. If you came in here in the dark, everything, all the barracks looked the same. My dad would know. Now you, th you think this is the neighborhood where you were, where you were in barracks? Uh, I could not tell you exactly which area might have been just a little bit over the hill over here. Dad was a soldier here during the Korean War. So you were 19 years old when you were drafted? Right. Can you still smell the food that you ate here? <laughs> and again, back in the 50s, this would have been full of military people. Oh, yeah. You'd have had uh, people up and down these streets uh, constantly. You would have had people out here drilling. You would have had all kinds of things going on. Believe me, you had drill sergeants and so on that nothing like this would ever occur. It wouldn't look like this, that's for sure. New in 1940, deemed useless by 1994. Huh, why? That's one of those military decisions that happened back in Washington, D.C. It was redundant, considered redundant. For some soldiers, Fort Ord was their last home on U.S. soil before dying in combat. When did the bulldozers come in? They, well, they've already started it at the other end of the base. This is all part of one project here. I expect it'll be gone probably next year or after. Well, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we got out here to show it to you because a year from now, this is all going to be gone. I hate to see it go, but at the same time, that's progress. In a moment, Amy climbs aboard. It's very cold. And we hit the waves. Woohoo! It's all team effort, Brian. When I Am a Base trip to Pacific Grove continues. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney, and that's... Amy Lesnick. And you know where we are right now? We're in Monterey, Brian. That's right, because we just headed south from Fort Ord as we continue our point A to B trip. And you've been in Monterey before. I have been in Monterey. Yeah. And I it's, love a, it down it's here. a beautiful day for it. A beautiful destination. And if we were going to stop in one place at Monterey, you know where that's going to be. Brian, that would have to be the aquarium. Yeah, that's what everybody does, and with good reason, Monterey Bay Aquarium is a great aquarium, but you've seen it, you've seen it. And we already just saw about 70 sea otters. So. Yeah, that's right, So, and besides, we're running out of time, so we've got to make it to point B, which is... Pacific Grove. Let's go. All right. There are 1,300 historical buildings in this one town, 15,000 people. 60 restaurants. 60 restaurants? 60. Good heavens! There are also 18 churches. And as the sun sinks slowly in the west, what do you suppose the residents do here for fun? They do this. Kayaking. Let's go. Huh? I mean, for some lucky people who live on Ocean View Boulevard, all they have to do is cross the street 
bring the kayak, and here's where we're headed. I'm just gonna pour out a little bit. It's very cold. Okay, let's go forward, forward. All right. Amy, nice job. Isn't this gorgeous? Ah, this is absolutely amazing, it watching is the perfect. sunset. And do you know where we are? We're here in Pacific Rim. That's right, this is point B. It's the end of the show. Woo! What was your favorite part? You know, Brian, I think it's sea otters. How cute they are. Sea otters were great. That was perfect. And if you want any more information about any of the stops we made, Amy's FullCircleFun.org. Log on to our website, CBS5.com slash Eye on the Bay. In the meantime, I'm Brian Hackney. And I'm Amy Lesnick. Amy did a great job, didn't she? We'll see you next time. Thanks Good for night. having me, Brian. You yeah, absolutely. Promotional consideration provided by the lovely Captain's Inn in Moss Landing. <laughs>